welcome back to you all in the last lecture we have seen the working of sram and we have used this diagram in which we have taken two inverters and output of one inverter was connected to the input of other and with these with this arrangement i have shown to you that how the informations are stored in sram we have seen read operation and write operation but in actual practices these inverters are to be made by something mean what is inverter if i am talking about inverter in that designing vlsi designing then these inverters are to be made by something okay so in actual practice these inverters are made by mos cmos transistors okay so if these are made of cmos transistor then let's see how we can have the actual circuit of these sram okay so for that what we have to do we have to remove this uh, circuit or latch we have used or shown earlier on and now let's replace them with the help of cmos okay this green uh, this is your cmos uh, uh, circuit and now what we'll do we'll make this mean the connection will remain same like output of uh, one cmos will should be connected to the input of other like this okay before that we have connected the power supply and ground okay now the output of one like this output of this uh, you can say this uh, from this terminal we are taking the output of this uh, cmos and from this terminal we will be taking the input okay from this terminal we will be taking output uh, mean from this terminal yeah from this terminal we will be taking the output and from this terminal we will be taking the input okay so now as we have seen previously the in mean there was a back to back connection mean input was connected to the output of the other similar uh, kind of arrangement we are going to do here also so the output of one flip flop is to be connected with the input of other similarly output of one flip flop is connected to the input of other so this is the actual circuit what we have because uh, by inverter mean we have understood the concept of inverter we have seen how that was working but in actual practice we have this kind of circuit okay so uh, let's see mean how this will incorporate with uh, our discussion what we have had okay and uh, let's complete this okay so before uh, going to the uh, for understanding the working of this cell first we have to understand how this cmos memory cell or how this cmos inverter works okay so let's go ahead so uh, here i have shown you pmos and nmos if you have a look in the previous circuit th that was combination of one this is your pmos and this is your nmos okay so it was combined with both of them now or combination of both of them so let's first learn separately both of them so this is your pmos okay and this is your nmos here i have shown three different terminals in each of them source drain and gate okay the mean you can go with these thumb rules for time going to discuss with you if gate of pmos is connected with zero okay what will happen this will be turned on okay if gate of pmos is connected with zero it will be turned on otherwise it will be off and if it is turned on then whatever mean it will be short circuited uh, you can say and whatever information you have had at s that will be connected with t that will be short circuited okay see like this okay similarly in nmos if at the gate terminal you are giving one under this condition only it will be turned on and whatever information you have stored at s that will be connected with the d okay so this is the working or this is how you can turn on pmos and this is how you can turn nmos turn on nmos okay uh, for turning on or pmos we have to provide zero at the gate terminal of pmos and for turning on nmos we have to connect one at the gate terminal of nmos okay what next now let's connect them as if they were connected previously na now what we have did we have connected p and nmos together 
and I have provided a common input to both of them okay so now this circuit if you remember the previous circuit what we have seen this is the same as that circuit now so this circuit is known as your CMOS inverter okay so if I am saying that it is inverter so obviously if I am giving one at its input its output will be zero and if I am giving zero at its input its output will be one you can see that also uh, like uh, let's say I have this uh, let's say I have this uh, mean this is to be connected with VDD okay actually and this is to be connected with ground okay or oh, please uh, don't mind my writing here so this is input and this from this we will take output okay let's say I have given zero as my input if I am giving zero as my input can you suggest me which of the MOSFET will be on this P will be on obviously because input of P is connected with zero and input of N is connected with zero both the inputs I mean input of both the MOS is connected with zero and we have just seen that in P MOS if input is connected with zero it will be turned on and that will behave like a or act like a short circuit okay so and this will be turned off so it will behave as open circuit so with short circuit we can draw something like that like this okay so now as you can see there is a direct connection between VDD VDD the supply what you have provided and the output this is your output so what I mean this VDD will be connected with output so actually what you are getting at the output you are getting at output logic one I mean VDD will be considered as logic one so this is how it works actually okay now uh, we'll move toward the next uh, discussion so now here we have a uh, mean again we have the same circuit now uh, I will in this circuit I will explain you how this mean uh, latch or these uh, arrangement of uh, CMOS is working as a latch itself okay although we have seen the read and write operations in the previous uh, uh, lecture so I won't repeat read and write operation of this CMOS memory cell because that is exactly same as what we have understood in the case of that uh, inverters that block diagram representation of the inverters okay so here what I will I am trying to illustrate is how this mean latch is working that's all okay so initially let's say we have got 1 and 0 hmm? so now this 1 is connected with uh, input of uh, this uh, transistors or this CMOS okay so this input of CMOS now if it is connected with one then that one will ultimately appear here now NMOS and PMOS both are connected with one okay so if NMOS is connected with one it will be turned on see if NMOS is connected then it will be turned on similarly this PMOS is also connected with one okay and if PMOS is connected with one then it will be turned off now the this input is connected with the this zero is connected with the input of this CMOS and if it is zero then T5 input of T5 is zero so if the input of T5 is zero then it will turn on because it is NMOS now this zero is connected with T3 also and input of T3 is zero so it will be turned on okay so we have got this arrangement so the transistors which are turned on they will be considered as short circuit and the transistors those are turned off they will be considered as open circuit okay so here we have got a direct connection between VCC and Q bar if you see see here we have got a direct connection between VCC and Q bar why or how because T3 is short circuit and simply as I have pre explained previously then VCC will be directly connected with Q bar so you will be continuously getting one at the uh, one at Q bar okay and uh, similarly here the output Q is directly connected to the ground with the help of this T6 because T6 is short circuited okay so now mean this the content of Q bar will 
remain 1 and the content of Q will remain 0. Okay, that is how the information will be stored inside this CMOS memory cell. Whatever information you have is stored that will remain as it is. Okay, so that's all about this uh, CMOS memory cell. Okay, there is another important discussion. See here how many transistors we have in this case. See this T1, T2, T3, T4, T5, T6. Okay, so in total we have got six transistors. Okay, and this is why it is known as 6TS RAM. Okay, so having six transistor obviously mean in for a RAM if I am using six transistor it means it is requiring a little more space. Okay, so is there any way we can reduce the number of transistor? Hmm? Can't we design with the less number of transistors? Let's try doing that. Okay. I think we can let's see how uh, what we are going to do rather having all these transistors I am going to replace let's try designing with the help of NMOS only okay so if I am just saying NMOS so these are your NMOS okay so what we are going to do we are going to remove the PMOS we will remove the PMOS and I have removed them PMOS now we will replace these transistor with resistor okay that won't change the operation of the circuit and it will still work as an inverter if you replace them by an uh, uh, resistor see i have replaced them by a resistor still it will work as a inverter itself this circuit diagram like this circuit is also it will also work as an inverter how see if you have provided vcc okay and at, at the input let's say at the input i have given this is mm, wait a minute at the input let's say I have given 0 okay if I have given 0 at the input then this uh, this is NMOS remember if input of NMOS is connected with 0 it will be turned off okay so whatever VDD I have applied here the whatever VDD I have applied here that will mean uh, there will be obviously there will be a drop across this register but still that VDD will ultimately appear at the output because it has not got any path to be connected with ground it won't go to ground so this will remain here itself okay so vdd will be connected to the output and at zero input you are getting one so it is working as an inverter okay so this is how mean uh, this circuit also will work as an inverter so simply we can go with this only hmm? wait a minute oh yeah yeah so now this in this uh, to how many uh, transistors we have in this as you can see we have got four transistors only t1 t2 oh uh, i mean i have written t5 t6 only but in total t1 2 3 1 2 3 and 4 so in total we have got four transistors only okay so this is known as 4 t sram hmm? now uh, the circuit is also having the same function and will perfectly work as SRAM even with less number of transistors so mean uh, that will comparatively have less space requirement then the question is why we have studied 60 uh, SRAM okay I mean why we are always concerned about the space and if we can have the same operation with the help of four transistors only then why we have studied 60 RAM the answer is the reason 60 RAM is having less power dissipation because that was having CMOS only okay and CMOS is always having less power consumption uh, power dissipation or in comparison to the other circuits and MOS PMOS and uh, all okay furthermore here we have used resistors also because of this resistor also there will be power dissipation so uh, and this 40 SRAM comparatively so we can uh, if we compare them both of them then 60 SRAM will have less power uh, dissipation in comparison to 40 uh, mean SRAM okay so in conclusion what we can say that we may use both of them depending on the requirement if we are very much concerned about space then we have to go with 40 uh, SRAM and if we are very much concerned about power then we have to go with 60 SRAM okay that's all for the day. In next lecture, we will be talking about DRAMs. Thank you very much.